today's focus is on posture. Uh, I have sort of a somewhat interesting, I think, unique background in that uh, 12 years ago, I broke my spine. I, um, I, I ruptured my uh, three lumbar discs in my low back, and I couldn't walk at all for 14, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, for 14 months. And I spent most of those 14 months laying on a coffee table in my living room uh, because I refused to have surgery, which would have had some long-term complications. And uh, my injury has surprisingly given me a, a new way of looking at martial arts and, and Aikido in general because I no longer have the physical muscle to force my way through conflict. Uh, and of course, Aikido being the art of non-conflict, Aikido is rather appropriate for, um, for, for dealing with that. I've had to develop my technique in such a way that I cannot, under any circumstances, rely on muscle. So I've had to really focus on biomechanics and leverage and creating fulcrums in people's uh, physiology to execute Aikido properly. And so I hope to share some of that with you here today. So Aikido is the art of blending. Or uh, anybody here to express any other ways? The art of I look at it since I'm an old guy. There's plenty of there being much around. Yeah. The art of blending, right? Aiki, um, I meaning, of course, harmony. Ki meaning energy, right? And you put those words together, and it connotes blending, the way of blending. Um, I frequently hear it described as the way of uh, the, uh, the art of non-conflict, the art of non-resistance, and that's often very um, counter to many other martial arts, um, where where a punch comes in, the notion is block. In Aikido, we don't have blocks. A strike or an attack comes in, we blend. Right? We don't block because force on force creates friction. Friction hurts. Okay. So keep in mind, uh, as we practice it, I'd like you guys to really focus on this idea. Aikido is the art of non-resistance. Okay? Okay? So many times, it doesn't matter what we're doing. We're, we're human beings. The, we are programmed. You can say that. We're programmed that if, if she comes at me and pushes on my chest, for example, we're programmed to push back. That's our program. It's our innate um, instinct. Anybody have dogs? Okay, if you pull on the dog's leash, what does it typically do? Pull. It pulls what? Pull. It, pulls. it pulls back, right? I've had dogs where you pull on the leash and they start to do that. Humans are no different. And we have to sort of, un what Aikido is, is learning how to unprogram that. So again, when she comes and pushes towards us, immediately I'm pushing back. Force creates counter force, and that's not what we want to try to achieve in Aikido. In Aikido, I don't want to use my force or my energy. In my case, I can't. I have to steal hers. I have to take hers and use it to my advantage. So uh, let's start with a basic uh, kazushiwaza, or an off-balancing um, exercise. It's not a technique, but it can lead into a lot of techniques. So from katadori, one-handed, one-sided grab. Okay, from here, let's just practice, rather than yanking or pulling, if I just turn my attention this way. I know you guys have all done this before. Morgana and I are close to the same height, and I turn, and now I'm taller. And now we're going to talk a lot about that, about height today. Height matters. Height is a variable. Height is important. And being shorter or taller is not advantageous or disadvantageous necessarily. Okay? They each have advantages. I prefer in Aikido to be shorter than my opponent in most cases. But sometimes it's okay to be taller too. So every statue has a different advantage and a different utility. So right here, let's have some connection. Notice if I just kind of do this, we have no musubi, no connection. So I want to have a little bit of current running through us where I can feel this martial intent that she's giving me so I can practice. And I'm just going to pivot a little bit. That's it. I'm thinking about bringing her elbow across the midline of her body this way. Just that much. Because who she was Okay, you ready? Let's go. So Aikido comes from the Japanese sword work. Okay, and I've I've been practicing uh, an art called Yaido. Does anybody know what Yaido is? Okay. Okay. Yaido is the, yeah, the art of lives, plays, uh, sword. <coughs> I've been doing that with uh, uh, Monica Iwakabe for about 10 years now. And the, the similarities between Aikido and Yaido are, are profound. I mean, there's a lot of them. Um, and Aikido comes from sword work. So because of that, almost all Aikido techniques on some level mimic a sword. You guys have probably heard that before. So 
See how my hips are kind of pointing off this way? But my partner's over here. So I want my hips to be toward her. And I want to, this doesn't look like a bone of sword. This looks more like a bone of sword. Okay? So I turn everything toward her this way. My hand is in front of my abdomen. Now when I turn this way, I get the result I want. If I just turn my hips this way and it's open my hips and my sword, my hands and my hips, I don't get much of a result. If I just swing my arm back and forth, I don't get much of a result. I have to align both my hand and my hips up here. And pivot. Now, you guys did really well with that. Some people are kind of doing this. Tell me what could be better. What could be better? Posture. Yeah, posture, right? Who's off balance? Both of Both us, right? So Aikido is about me gaining, gaining leverage. My goal is to be the one with my balance and so her without her balance. So frequently, maybe if you guys do Ikkyo, sometimes you guys see Ikkyo and I see people do this. Now we're both off balance. Okay, my Ikkyo, I have to do this one. See how she drops to the ground and I stand up? Out of necessity, right? Not out of cooperation. So um, let's take what we just did. Not to do that right This time, we're going to take the back foot, we're going to step out this way. Okay? Before we did this axial rotation here, this time the back foot is going to step out here. Now, when I say out here, I'm specifically referring to Morgana's third leg. If she had a third leg, it might be on to here. Or perhaps it would be out here, back here. And I'm going to step a little bit outside of her third leg, the invisible third leg. Because when I do that, Morgana has to stumble to be correct, to reestablish her balance. So from here, I'm going to step out this way. I've made her shorter than me. That's an important concept we're going to talk about in a little bit. I'm going to bring my arm under her, her uh, chin like this. I've got one hand up like I'm raising a sword, one hand down like I've just drawn a sword. And I'm just going to, let's see, let's, let's just do a stretch first, okay? Pivot, and I'll give her a nice stretch in the back. Okay, this one's good. So please, uh, the back foot steps. Back foot comes this way, and here. This hand is up, cutting on the sword. This hand is down, I just drew my sword out of my sheath. Okay, so again here. Switching hands and pivoting. Not throwing yet, I'm just giving her a stretch. Stepping this way. Okay, now my goal is to put my triceps across her mandible. Okay. A lot of times I see people be looking at you and kind of just doing this, like, like smell my forearm. And it's kind of weird, right? But instead, I want to smell my arm, which is much nicer. So I step here, and then, oh, look at that. Notice I'm invading her space. This is important. A lot of people are afraid to touch other people, right? So kind of like this, like, is this right? And there's all this space between us, right? In Aikido, I want to take her space this way. One hand is down, one hand is up. Let's do it this way so I can get to the angle. Back foot steps, grabbing her wrist, coming up and pivoting. I'm not throwing her yet. I'm just giving her a back stretch. So we call this Katadori Konkyu Harimundo. Okay, Konkyu Harimundo. Try this one. Right.
Okay? So whenever you're doing a keto technique, they come from sore throat. So we always want um, our posture to reflect that. And the better your posture, the more strength you have. The weaker your posture, the weaker, the less strength you have. You guys play Jenga? Yeah. Okay, right? The more the tower leans, the worse the game gets, the more dangerous the game gets. So rather than here and sort of this, here, take your whole sword and move, cut toward the person. Here. Cutting with my sword, my hips toward my palm. So let's change gears. Same principle. Um, same principle, same three steps. I key, Kazushi she said, blend, take balance, and maintain your posture. Let's do katadori, right? Katadori technique, grab my shoulder. Uh, and this time let's make it nagare, so it's a little bit more dynamic. She's coming in, grab my shoulder, right? Because very, very rarely will someone come up to you and go, do something. Right? That doesn't happen in real life. So as she comes toward me, I'm here. Okay? Get out of the way. Take her balance. Looks like I'm doing very little, and I am doing very little, but on the other hand, there's a lot in there. Rule number one, get out of the way. I don't back straight off, why not? <laughs> right! Okay, there's a truck. Okay, be a truck for me. Okay? The truck coming. What's the problem? No. There's still a truck coming. All right, you try to outrun a truck, right? If there's a truck coming, get on the sidewalk, right? So we never back up straight in Aikido, never, because there's still a truck coming, okay? Now, similarly, I have to take her balance. So I'm going to do two things at once. We, call, we have this concept called Futatsu no Hoko, okay? It means to move in two directions simultaneously. Futatsu no Hoko. So as she grabs my shoulder, I'm stepping back off the line just a little bit. I'm blending keep. And look at her balance already. Have I done anything else? She's overcommitted, isn't she? Her chest is in front of her hips. So we already have the beginning of Kuzushi. Can you guys see that? Yeah. Okay. okay. So, remember, I don't want to use my muscle or my energy. I want to steal hers. So rather than grab me, and then we do stuff, mm. right? I want her to do the work as I'm leaning. Okay? So here. Now that would be a closed fist or whatever, you know, if necessary. But I don't want to make a mistake and hurt more than that, and she'd be upset at me and regret coming. So I do a nice soft atemi. So I, I retreat and extend forward at the same time. Notice my hips are still toward her, not turned this way. And that's what most people are inclined to do. But now my hips are over here, my partner's over here. So keep everything toward, why not toward her or not? She comes in to grab me here. Look at that position. Okay? There's a lot we could do from here. I guess the simplest thing is just to finish. Well, let's not. Let's do something a bit more sophisticated. Let's do Nikyo. So, I'm going to retreat, tell me. Immediately go to the hand. Come back out to the side, Nikyo. And you're down. Now, if you know the pin, do it. There's multiple pins. You <coughs> pin this way. You can come up to the top of the head. You can pin this way. You can grab reverse Sankyo and pin this way. There's all sorts of things you could, but you could continue to stand, I suppose. And this way. So if you know a pin, do a pin of your choice. I don't really care about the pin. What I care about is these principles. Get off the line, take their balance, and maintain their posture. So she comes in. So I've created a lot of position already. Quickly come here. Knee kill. I'm squatting down, but my chest is over my hips. Not this. Okay? I'm here. Keep my posture up. Keep her down. Even if I'm kneeling, my posture is still up. When I'm pinning her, I don't move forward. I sit up nice and tall, and I make her ten. Maintain my posture, even if I'm on my knees. So again, I lean, left shoulder, tenny, find the hand, knee kyo, start to turn her over. Turn her down, and let's do this four minutes this time. So, katanori knee kyo, nagare, meaning in motion. Okay, let's try this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So let's do like a big Nikyo review. Okay? Nikyo, you guys are familiar with Ikyo. Ikyo is an I, right? Nikyo, Ichi, Ni, Sanchi. Nikyo, second one, second practice. 
excited to be teaching. Uh, where'd you go? Oh, here. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so the, uh, my teacher gives us is very particular about thumb, finger, hand placement on these first five techniques. Nikyo means that I'm going to take my thumb middle knuckle. If I touch the inside of the thumb middle knuckle, that middle knuckle is going to go on the base of her knuckle, her bottom of thumb knuckle. Second, and the first. So I'm taking my knuckle, my middle thumb, and I'm placing it on the base of her thumb knuckle here. Okay? And my other fingers are on the, they take a ton of portion of her hand, and I'm squeezing that. Then I'm bringing this back into this orientation. The wrist is flexed 90 degrees. The elbow is flexed close to 90 degrees. Now we have knee kill. Okay. This is the, and then, and then this pinky, I pretend I'm doing a Shomenuchi strike to the top of her forehead, like I would on the hand Shomenuchi. So from here, Shomenuchi, here, she's anticipating pain. Okay? <laughs> top of her head, here. Just like that. I project my feet from my hips through like a sword, like I'm cutting her in half. Here, hips, top of her head, cut. Just like that. You can do it with one hand, but when you're new, it's best to use two. So, just grab her wrist and do it. Kaishino, this way. Nikyo. I recommend you use a fulcrum. Put it just below your clavicle here on your shoulder. Don't put it in the middle of your chest, right? Girls figure this out very quickly. Don't put this in the chest. Put it here on the clavicle. Turn this way. So she drops. Um, so let's practice just this knee kill. There's lots of ways you can do it. You can do it here, and like a waterfall, kind of like with a logo on a patch here, the water comes over the edge. This comes down. A lot of people think it's an Indian rubber, <laughs> and it's not. It, the waterfall goes down this way, down on the wrist. So let's everybody practice middle thumb knuckle to base of thumb. Flex the wrist 90 degrees, bend the elbow 90 degrees, place it on your clavicle, and your hips toward uke. Grab the wrist and come forward. Pinky to the top of the head. That's a lot. So let's uh, let's go over it uh, in groups of two. Okay? Part of let's try just the knee kill grip and practice the technique. No, no answer. Just go right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's the same here. I take that here. Yeah. <laughs> that was, that was so we don't have to do that. 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 So we don't have to do the same with Boba, because he steps in, he's going to do this. You see how much far in him is already? Right? He's so reaching back. So I've already achieved most of what I want to do. Slide up his forearm. Now, I don't want to do the ego. I know, I'm stretching. I am. I know. So I'm going to do this whole ramp. So see where he's missing leg is? Yes. Missing leg over here. So I'm going to go there. Too much detail, so I, I, uh, one thing I didn't share yet. The, the, if there is such a thing as a secret to me, you know, what I've discovered is, or Sensei told me, is the trick is to keep the forearm parallel to the floor. Okay, at all times. The second I start doing this, she feels the knee kill less, less uh, severely. If I come this way, she definitely doesn't. I've lost it now. She might reverse it. What if they're way taller than you? If they're, oh, but they won't be. Why not? Oh, because you'll have them. That's right. Because the first thing you do is you fix the height, right? It doesn't matter how tall you are. It's a great question, you know. Um, Len, we're probably going to All right, so Len's still bigger than me. Good. Okay. Now, I'm trying to do Nikyo, but how do I make this parallel? So it's too early for Nikyo, right? But let's say I'm successful.
successful. I'm getting you to kill. Let's say I'm doing it like this. Okay? I want you to resist me as hard as you can. I'm not going to hurt you. Okay? Resist. Resist. Am I applying knee count? Is it pretty good? Stand up tall. See? So why is the knee count working? Because he's taller than he's taller than me, which means he has his balance and height, height i.e. starts with a B. Posture. I will never do an EQ until I've created this relationship. Ah, oh, look at that. Okay, and then EQ. All right, that's it. So we're here. Good question. So, EQ form is always parallel to the ground here. It's parallel to the ground. As I take her down, I take the keys parallel to the ground. And I place her on the ground. It's one way to You see that? At no time did the forearm change vectors. It's always parallel to the ground. So much so, you don't even need to grip. You don't need to do all this fiddle to up here. Watch. That's an EQO too. Feels the same? Forearms parallel to the ground. It's still an EQO. EQO is a relationship, not a grip. It's a relationship of the body parts. One to another. Um, things are ugly in a self-defense situation. You don't necessarily have time to perfect this beautiful knee kill with my middle knuckles. And yeah, that doesn't work. Things are ugly. Maybe this is all you get. And that's all you get. Okay? Um, so, any technique we do, we're ne I'm never going to do knee kill to her like this. Because, is it parallel? Yes, do I remember it? Yes. But she has her balance. I must do something first to affect her balance. In this case, I'll just take a step back. Not a big step. Now she's bent over. Now I can unique. Even here, parallel to the ground. See? Okay. Alright, let's be showing you she could This one I'm sure you guys are familiar with. But uh, we, we put a little uh, different kind of wasabi on there. Okay? So here, coming in, down, hit her. Is everyone familiar with Kodigashi? Oh yeah. Okay, so we'll talk about that. Come on up again. We're going to start in Kyaku Hami, in mirror image stance. It's her, people say this is the same foot, but it's not, right? It's her left foot. No, it's your right foot, and my left foot. So this is opposite stance, or mirror image stance. We call it Kyaku Hami. So as she comes in with the shoulder, she strikes at the top of my head. Rule number one is get out of the way. I don't want to be here. I don't want to try to manipulate the truck. I'm going to step off the line. Go ahead. Come again. Yeah. Bring it down here. I have my posture. She does not have hers. I'm grabbing her wrist. I'm going to place it on my thigh and tenkai. Stepping out. And coordination technique. Okay, no pin this time. Throw and let it go. Got the hummy stepping in, landing, off the line of attack, placing her forearm on my thigh. Tenkai. Stepping out. And coordination. So, Kodagashi, who does know Kodagashi? Show hands. Most of us. Okay, good. So, just a review for like gentlemen that are new. Kodagashi is a Gyakute technique, meaning opposite hand. It's her left hand, my right hand. And I'm going to put my thumb on the back of her ring finger knuckle. Some teachers are just a little different, that's okay. Thumb on the ring finger knuckle. Then my Tegatana side is going to the fold of her forearm and her, I'm sorry, her wrist, hand and this way. Kotegeshi literally translates as returning the forearm. Okay, Kote means forearm. Kayeshi comes from the verb head, which means to return. Most people think Kotegeshi means this. But there's nobody over there. And if I do this, I'm typically I, I'm, I'm pretty afraid of Kotegeshi. Most people like it. I don't. Because look at that free hand of hers. Boom. Okay? So instead, I learn Kotegeshi to go return it to her. So I return Kodigashi to her. I don't throw it away. I return it. And look what that does to her posture. She's fairly upright still. But if I return it to her, she's really in position. Okay? So, let's practice the throw first. Let's get to Kodigashi, which means she's already crooked. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> My thumb is on her ring finger now. My Tegatana is in the crook of her wrist. And I'm going to pretend, it's impossible, but I'm going to pretend to touch her fingers to the outside of her elbow. Okay? 
So if everybody feels their own elbow on the thumb side, there's a bone, bony protuberance right there. You want to try to touch the finger to the outside of the elbow. Not go this way, but return it to her. Try to touch this to here, mean like that. Okay. Now, when I do that, I'm going to tank on it. Uh, <laughs> now, this way. And I'm going to let go of her wrist. I'm going to let go of her wrist so that I maintain my posture. Here, tank on Let go of her wrist. That way I won't bend over. Are there pins? Yes. But I really like everybody focused in on posture. Here, now, let go. That way I'm not bending over. If I choose to hold on, that's fine, but I have to make sure I don't give away my posture. Tank up. See how I'm standing upright still? Sweet. And I'm still standing upright. I'm leaning a little bit, but as long as I don't lean past my knee, I still have my balance. Okay? So, before we get to the whole technique, let's make sure everybody's doing what I got you well. So, finding thumb on the back of the ring finger knuckle, making your fingers parallel to her fingers and return her fingers to the outside of her elbow. This way. Okay? Just no, no attack. Just the point you should throw until we get that. Okay? Let's try this. Okay. Horse is coming toward me. She's got to give me something. If she's standing there stagnant, then whose energy do I have to use in order to manipulate her? Whose energy am I using? Yours. Yours. Mine. Which means it's not a kilo. Okay? I need to use her energy. She's got to give me something as she comes toward me. Do you see the difference? My energy. Her energy. They look similar, but she's the source of the energy in the second one. So, Kosashi, here. And from here, I'm going to come down and some kill brings up. Again, just like when we warmed up in the first half of the class. I want my arm parallel to the floor and my forearm perpendicular to the floor. Here, I don't want to raise this up. A lot of people go like this. I want to get her up, so I raise the hand. No, I want to get her up. I come underneath her like that. Okay. So sang kyo. Uh, in fact, we'll probably just start there. So pulsa dori. Here. First thing I have to do. There's an attack coming. What's rule number one? Get out of the way. Get out of the way. So the attack's coming in. Come out this way. Now the attack's going that way. I don't clutch, I blend. In comes the attack. Aikido means blending energy. Okay, it doesn't look like a clutch. Wrist and elbow, switch feet, step in, come under, find the hand. Now I have the sound kill position. What's step two? What was it called? Starts with a K? Kazushi. 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 Right? It needs to take her balance. Did I break those two points in her body? Yeah, she's bent over. Not terribly bent over, but she's pretty far bent over. Okay, and then from here, come here. Stand in here. Take your hand up from your belly. There you go. And tap. Kneel in. Stand in here. Sorry. Yeah. So she stands in front of here. Song kill. Enter into the front. Draw her down. Stand up nice and tall. Don't lean over. See? Now I'm in position. Wider stance. Upright. And tap. Here, I'm moving out to the side. A lot of times I make sure I see this sort of thing, which is okay. There's nothing wrong with it. Except, what about that free hand of Oh, right? Her force is coming this way. So Aikido is the art of what? Yeah, yeah. Art of blending. Blending. So if there's force coming this way and I'm going this way, is that blending? You guys remember those math problems? Two trains are heading toward each other at 55 miles an hour? Mm -hmm. Right? So if something's coming toward me, I'm going toward her. That to me looks like a collision. So if her force is coming this way, I'm going to think about going this way. And I change the force, I blend with the angle. This way. Okay. Let's try that with Kosadori Sankyo Moten. Okay. Kosadori Sankyo Moten. Okay, I'll make it for a second. So let's go over a few things that Watkins and I are noticing. Okay? So, we're humans. That's not our fault. Right? But humans 
humans are naturally inclined for conflict. We're like those dogs. You pull on the dog's leash and immediately pulls back. You pull on my leash for me, right? Right? That's the way they're primates, we're primates, that's the way uh, vertebrates are. That's the way um, that's the way we designed. We have to resist that temptation. Okay? So close the door. What did I do? I used my energy, and which direction did I go? Yeah, I, I went straight. I went toward the conflict. You ever hear about those people that are driving 100 miles an hour down the road? There's nothing in sight. They managed to hit the one telephone pole that's around, right? So we tend to move toward the conflict. But Aikido is the art of non-conflict. So I don't want to move toward resistance. This is my attacker. She's coming this way. The line of attack is this direction. This is the art of blending. Does that look like flashing? Okay. Does that look like flashing? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, from close to I redirect her energy. I'm going to step in. I'm going to find Song Kim. Now, a little review on Song Kim. Anybody remember the Staples commercials? With the easy button? Little red buttons. Yeah, that was easy. Okay. There's an easy button in Sankyo that most people do. A lot of people are doing Sankyo like this. This is at the wrist. We do Sankyo at the hand. Okay? Does this hurt more now? No. A little bit? Yeah, not really, right? I don't have a whole lot of leverage. Come on up. So when you go into Sankyo, we're going to do the same thing we did on Nikyo. Middle thumb knife base of her thumb knuckle. Feel different? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so notice that I'm not grabbing the wrist. Some people's wrists, like Chris's, right, and, and other young people's, whose bones aren't totally ossified yet, this doesn't hurt them at all. Okay? So base, middle of my thumb knuckle on the base, look at that. I'm barely putting anything into it. And watch when I turn my hips toward her. Look at that. I'm moving maybe an inch or two. See? Sometimes I see people want to, uh, it's because they have the wrong setup. They're grabbing the wrist, which doesn't apply leverage. So my fingers are grabbing the tegatana, the meaty part, the fleshy part of the pinky side of the hand, and my middle thumb knuckle is pressing on the bottom of her thumb knuckle. And I'm moving my hip by way she's even anticipating. Okay? It's like here, there. Tiny bit. And remember, my sword is over here. I don't want that. I want my sword where? In front of my hips. See? Right. Now I'm going to cut my sword down to the ground. Step in front, and with one finger, bring it down to the mat, and then do that. Okay? So change partners, and really make sure you're getting the easy button, the Sankyo easy button. Thumb to the base of her thumb, not wrist. There is a world of difference. Check it out. Okay? Oh, yeah. Try it because it's very much. Okay, you're okay for a second. Let's point out a few more things. Okay? So the emphasis today is on posture, and there's a funny transition here. All right. See the difference? I move here. Not uh, here. Okay? We, we, we get used to doing this in the dojo because we're bowing, right? But martially, this is pretty unintelligent. Would you guys agree? Okay, so why do we do it? Respect. Yeah, we're showing deference to our teacher, right? We're literally, tra traditionally, we're saying, I offer you my head. I'm, I'm like a dog, lays on its belly and gives up. That's kind of where that comes from, kind of. Okay, so if I'm here, and I step in, see how I'm not giving away my posture? And I do that by making my stance wider. If I keep my stance narrow, then I have to do this. And now my head is way past my knee. Now, what if she grabs my collar and yanks me to the ground? The ground? See? Right? So that's why I don't want to do that. So I'm over here, this way, so I'm here. I never pass the vertical plane of the front knee. So not this. Okay? So 
So that's one thing. Two, in our dojo, we talk about something called a, a T-Rex. Chris, you know what T-Rex is? Yeah, right? <laughs> right? T-Rex is kind of do this. They got little arms, right? So in Aikido, what gives me leverage is my limbs. When I do Ikkyo, Nikkyo, Sankyo, see what I'm doing? I'm T-Rexing. And when I do that, I give away my power. So instead of going like this, she forces toward me. See what I did? Look at her. She's on top of me. She has her posture. Look at me. I'm leaning backward. I mean, because she, she won. I gave away my power. When I draw a sword, I don't go like this. Right? It looks kind of silly. When you draw a sword, you draw. Okay? So when she comes in to grab my wrist, I'm going to draw. See how extended my arms are? I don't want to accommodate. If she comes in, I come in a little. Oh, okay, maybe again, maybe again. So my arms are extended here. See how extended my arms are? And then I'm in this position, so on and so on and so on. So on. All right? So keep this in mind as we move on to the next technique. Next technique is we're going to practice the transition from Sankyo to Yonkyo. Does everybody know Yonkyo? Does anybody not know Yonkyo? Hands? Um, probably half of my students. Half? Okay. Good. Okay, so about half of you. So let's do Sankyo Yonkyo from Kosa. Here, down, stepping in. Sankyo. Sankyo. From here, Yonkyo. Good. There's a mean pin from here, but we're not going to get to that. <laughs> so, Yonkyo, what are we mimicking when we do Yonkyo? Does anybody know? Sword and hustle, right? The grip we do is called Tenuchi. You don't grab a sword like this. This is what we call batter up. All right? Anybody play golf? Golf grip. I want to make a V shape with my thumb and forefinger. A V shape here. I hold the sword this way. This is called tenouchi. This grip is yonkyo. So when we're practicing yonkyo, we're practicing holding the sword, bringing the sword down, and so forth. So let's practice this fun transition. Well, I think it's fun when I'm going to All right? Let's try this thing. Up this. Up here. Down. Sankyo. And we're going to practice transitioning from Sankyo to Yonkyo. And it's a fun little transition. Come on back up. Sankyo. Yonkyo. Other side. Sankyo. Here. Yonkyo. When I do Sankyo, I was showing before a one hand grip so you can understand the thumb to thumb relationship. But my other hand, like a sword, grabs the rest of the fingers. This gives me more leverage and more damage. Okay. To get to Yonkyo, I'm simply going to slide up. And I want to put the front knuckle of my first index finger on the inside surface of the radius, this thumb side up. So it kind of hurts. Everybody take out your radius and feel the bony part and move toward the middle until it gets soft. That's the inter interosseous tissue. Okay, that's where all the nerve endings are. I want to place my, what I call this, the yongkyo bone in that group. Sankyo, yongkyo. And you'll get this little light and shock sensation from the before. Okay, all the way down. There, there's pins, but we won't focus on that. So, that's in here. Is it all right? So, don't collapse. Hands extend, come out. Sun kyo. Step in again. Maintain my posture, burn in the sun kyo position. Bring her up. And then find yon kyo. Cut the yon kyo back. So, let her go. Okay? Sun kyo, yon kyo. So, let's not do the whole thing, but start. From Sankyo, okay, no attack. Start from Sankyo. Draw back, find Yonkyo. Sankyo, find Yonkyo. Sankyo, find Yonkyo. While she's moving is when you want to apply the technique. When she's off balance, if she's moving, she doesn't have foundation. Sankyo, Yonkyo, and then she goes. Okay? Partner up, just do that much and then we'll come back to the technique. Pretty good.
Slide up without changing your hands. All right, you felt this yet? Not yet. Okay. Now give me some structure. Don't be a jelly bean or a jellyfish. Okay, song kill. No kill. What I don't want to do is I don't want to climb. Okay, this is song kill. No kill. Feel that? Okay, cool, there it is. Well, <laughs> it's, just, it's just an orientation. So, song kill this way. And then simply slide up. Young Joe. Oh, you right there? Oh, yeah. That's super. And that's, I'm, I'm using the mini grid right now. But, yeah, it's right in the It's anywhere along this ridge. It doesn't matter where you do it. I hear Young Joe way up out of the elbow here. Up here. Feel that? Okay. Alright, try that. Okay, young man. So, young Joe, we don't do it for very long, but it's quite painful. You only, I, I really recommend work on it. So there's an exercise, I don't know if you saw me do this with the teenagers years ago, but sit. So we like to do it this way. Put me in your cow. Put me in your cow. Now one at a time, please. Cut me forward one. That's not young kill. Oh, young kill. Mm -hmm. Good. Ah. Good, Morgana, good. You're right. This is how you find young kill. You get someone to volunteer. <laughs> Draw the sword, and I tag her in the ribs a little bit. Just 
director who will something to think about. Let's do it this way. Draw your sword. Okay. You're going to get a multi ten cut. So please do this carefully. This time, I do go forward. But I go forward 45 degrees this way. Okay. Whereas for Ikyo, Ikyo's not here, we're going this way. Degrees. This time I'm going to go forward. I'm going to close the gap between her and me. Place the head on my shoulder. I don't care about this hand. Raise my sword. I'm going to the sword. And how can you push it this way? So let's try. Really, I can multi tank on it. Close up a little. Now, what happens well, sometimes, you have to do that today. This is the one that's going to step around. Bring this here now. Oh, oh, yeah. This is right? here. Right? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Cooperative, 
right? So here, and oh, yeah, look at me, I'm so cooperative that I roll, but it, it doesn't really pan out in reality. Instead, I want her to come toward me, going from, she doesn't know what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take her energy, redirect it, and throw her away without raising her balance back. Without doing this. Because honestly, she can reverse on me. She can do something to me, right? What would you do here? Well, she might throw me. Now, I might do something different to her. She doesn't know what I'm going to do. I might instead maybe come this way. Right? She was ready to know. <laughs> so, let's practice. Katajori, Kiriyoshi. Tenkan, Ra. Am I making myself shorter? Yes. But I'm not breaking the rule. I'm not doing this. Right? My head's not, it's past my knee. So I want to bend my knees, not my waist. In front of my knee. Does that make sense? Right. So let's make two lines, two lines. Throw this way. Let her connect, but move with four. Drop to your knee and circle. Let's try that. Let's throw this way. Do you notice how she moves? Most people do it like this. See how nothing happened? Like she didn't budge. So most people, most people do what we call accommodating, where I'm accommodating her biomechanics, right? Partially because we're nice and we're Americans, we're, we're, we're cognizant of each other's invisible bubbles around each other, right? I do this, I'm not really affecting Morgana, am I? So instead, when I take on, see how she moves, I'm affecting her, her she said. I'm putting her in a formal position. So Tenkan, Furikabari, now step back and Chibori, this way. Okay? Not done yet, there's more. We're going to turn this into a cooking diagram. Turn. Chibori, here. We kind of started with a version of this in Kata where we came out to the side here and did this. So it's another cooking but we get there a different way. It's a very fluid, very pretty movement. Okay. It's not slammy waza, which I've stolen that word from Joel Sensei. We use that to test right now. No slammy waza. And when you're doing a kokinage, most people are, again, afraid to, to invade your space, so they try to throw like this. That won't work. I want to put my tricep across her mandible. It's very unpleasant to her. Okay? Especially if it's the key. Okay? Here. So put your tricep across her face. And come on. Shibori, raise a hand and throw. And one more time. I'm sure we'll go over this again. And come on. Step back. Kisuke Shibori. And Kokinami. Try to work with somebody close to your height to learn the mechanics, okay? Let's try it for a few minutes. Morote Dori, Kokinami. Okay, so here we are, please. So remember, we're focusing on posture today, okay? So watch your knee. See what I'm doing? I'm making myself shorter than Morgana because I think I need that to whip her around. I don't. Okay? Don't make it more complicated than it is. And when we're learning something new, again, it's typically a male trait, okay? When things get confusing, we do things harder and faster. Okay? Yes, because that means you're better. <laughs> so when you're driving and you come to a fork in the road and you're not sure which one to take, do I go left or do I go right? We all slam on the gas and rush toward the intersection, right? No, right? We put the brake on because I'm not sure which way to go. So when you're uncertain, slow down and get softer and find the biomechanics you can. When you're unsure, don't speed up and try to throw somebody. That's where things go awry, right? So here, here. And at no time am I bending over. I don't need to because my power is in my hips. If you find yourself bending over, it's because you're putting your power in your chest. 
this is how I move my chest. All right, well, I don't have any part of my chest because my back is here, so I have to come here. And I have to throw that away. Okay? So I would encourage you guys to try that. Try it again. Same partners. Thank you, Mr. So that second hand comes up soon. See how soon that hit? Does that feel different? See how soon the hand comes up? My weight is long. And I draw. He's so turned. So turned that I have to now reach across my chest to break my posture and try to push it back. So instead, here, I'm already here. That's okay. All right? Yeah. Okay, how about So we got a little bit of time left for a few more seconds. So, uh, let's, let's do another Kokinage. I like this one, Len asked for this one. Kokinage, we call this a uh, Katanori Kokinage Hana. Hana, okay? Hana means flower, okay? Like Ikebana is really Ike Hana. And when you put it together, it's Ikebana. Anyway, so Ikebana, we call this a uh, flower Kokinage because, like a lot of flowers, when it's cold out, they, get, they close down. And when it's warm out, they, get, they open up. So that's why we call it that. So, Katanori. So, I'm going to come up. Oh, please don't hurt me. Come off the line. Come up. Okay? The flower gets cold. The flower gets warm. Other side. Katamori. Kokinage. Here. Hana. Now, be careful. The line of tech is which direction? Yeah, toward the road. Right? So I don't want to back up because I'm just drawing the truck more into me. So I want to get where? Is the truck coming where we want to be? Outside. Out of the way. Where specifically? Out of your way. On the what? It's a street. What's on the side of the street? The sidewalk. I'm going to step onto the sidewalk. Here. Okay, here's the sidewalk. If I draw his head to my shoulder from here, I raise my hand. Okay, Right? Size doesn't matter. Yes, lens a lot bigger than me, right? But, oh, but, oh, but, watch. Here's this one. This isn't going to work. This isn't a break, right? Kokinami. So I'm going to go back to this corner, draw both hands in, come up, put my tricep under his chin, and turn my hips back forward. Where I, where I throw him depends upon where his feet are placed. So, where is he going to fall? Right, so his missing leg. Approximately here. Maybe a little bit more this way too, depending on how I twist it. Now, okay, so now back toward Phil. Okay, let's try it. Katanori, Kokinage, Hana. Go slow, please don't follow each other in the teeth. It's really bad for your elbow. The next one is called Ushiro uh, Kyotiroi, or Ushiro Kyotiroi, depending on your vocabulary. Um, it's another Kokinage, and we call this one Soto Tenkan. Okay? Outside turn. Soto Tenkan. Um, it's a little tough to see the Soto Tenkan. But the idea is that she's coming around to get me. Again, nobody attacks like this unless what? Somebody else. Unless there's a second attack, right? Or someone else. They're going to hold you down for some reason. Um, it's a little bit contrived. We learn these in a very contrived environment so that we know the mechanics so that we don't get hurt and then better and better you get the more realistic you become. Okay, so she's going to come around and try to get my hands in this position. My job, of course, is never to get in this position. All right? I say, what do you do if you find yourself in this position? You get in that position. Right? Here, drop it from the slow Say again. This is what we handle. That's right. <laughs> and actually, uh, we're going to talk about that exact issue with the other two right now, actually. Okay? So she comes around to get it. Okay. <laughs> so we need to be careful so nobody gets hurt. She's coming around again, right? Here. There. Okay. I'll go a little slower and get a little closer. This way. The pumpkin nugget. Soto Tenkan, because I'm turning, stepping to the outside and turning. It's 
So 360 degree turn. And here, this can be very, um, very martial, very violent, and you don't want to hurt partners. So it's important to practice safely. And there's a couple of tricks I want to make sure that we practice safely. Again. See, we practice a lot together, so I can go that fast. And that's not even half speed, right? I can do it much faster, normally. But we've got good Musubi, good Mahai. Yeah, there we go. And other sounds. Okay, gotta go carefully so that I don't hurt her. So, she's coming around to get me. First thing I'm gonna do whenever somebody grabs me is I draw toward me. See how she fell into me? I've immediately started to lose Kazushi. She's ugly. Draw her toward me. Now I'm going to put my hand on my belt, my abdomen. I'm going to move that way. She's coming around. I'm going to move this way. See how I'm starting to wrap her up around me? This way. Start to wrap her up. Oh, look at that. Here we go. My hand is in front of me, and I throw. Now, Samuel mentioned handcuffs. Lots of people do this in seminars. They do it like this. What's wrong with this? She's got a hold of your arm. Yeah, look at that. Oh, right? She's got you. Yeah, she's got me in, in pseudo handcuffs, right? So it's hard to break that habit. Again, we accommodate by doing this, yes, but I'm in, I'm in big trouble. Okay? I'm in, whoa, yeah, I'm in big trouble. So I want to instead, just grab my front hand and put it right here. Look at this. Right? That's an option too. What I like to do is nice big go over way. So, step forward, bring this here. Now, I don't want to do this. I risk hurting her pretty bad. I'm going to raise my sword. What was this called again? Had a funny name? Sound like a disco move? Buddha Kabuli. Okay? Buddha Kabuli. That's what some of the guys I cast rock on. And then turn my hips. So, Ushiro, Tikubitori, Kokinage, Soto Tenga. I raise my hand up straight. I don't stick my elbow out for her to walk into it. That would be really painful and mean. And this is not a hard fall. I have my arm straight in front of my chest. Never out here. Right? If I ask you guys, talking to the only, if I ask you guys to hold a weight here, 25 pound plate, can you do it? Yeah. If I ask you to hold a 25 pound plate out like this, can you do it? Maybe not for long. It's going to be a lot heavier. So I never want to have my arms to my side where I'm weak where she might grab me and put me in, in uh, an arm lock. And she's protecting herself. At the same time, we're doing a nice, simple back wall. This looks complicated, but it's actually simple. It's just not easy. It's simple. OK? Let's go carefully. No doing this. Raise your arm and turn like a, like a door. That way, if you were to make contact with your partner's face, it's with your soft tricep, not with your elbow point. Please go slowly. Okay? Let's try one See? That's right. Just right here. You keep turning your hips because there you go.
We just did Ushiro, Gyozidori, Kokinagi, Soto Tenkan, blah, 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 right? This is Uchi Tenkan. Same thing, but inside turn. It's a little easier. It's a little easier to do. It's a little harder on the brain. Okay. Yeah. That was better. Again. She gets the first hand. She gets the second hand. I turn into it and hook it up. There's a lot of fluidity in this. It's about not letting them get a good anything. Notice I'm doing exactly the same thing, I'm just turning in a different direction. Same Kokinagi movement. A little slow. Hand one, move to the side. Hand two, as she gets hand two, I'm turning into her and letting her fall to the ground. So, as she comes in, moving in the same direction, as she gets that second hand, turn into her and poke you. Right, it's a bit of a brain teaser. It's kind of like what we did in the meeting last night. <laughs> right? Okay, try that. Poke you now. Poke you now. Put your tank up. Go ahead. Last tank in. Okay, okay. We are out of time. So let me borrow the video for a second. So some of you guys started to really get this at the end. We do these techniques at the end because they're hard and they're complicated. But, so, you're in the tall sky in the roof? Is that true? Uh, yeah. Right? Okay. <laughs> so, just about. So, as he comes around again, I can't throw someone this tall in there, right? Let's stand up. Good. Okay. So, uh, let's do it again. So, he's taller than me. So, uh, we'll try to go slow, please. Okay. Here. As he gets the second one, I bring his, this hand, watch his height. See? Now he's a lot shorter than me. You can't throw someone who's taller than you. I see it all the time at seminars, for our oh, there you go. Trying to throw people when they're taller. You can't do it. I mean, only if he lets you. On the end of those nice Aikido seminars where everybody falls down for you. You have to do something about their height in order to throw someone. You can't throw someone who's taller than you. Okay? Thank you. Let's line up the bow up.